Hey guys, Kenny here, uh, just about to head out to the Water Gym, which uh, for those of you who don't know is a tournament that's put on by our local TOs here in Washington every year. Um, I don't know how it started, it started a long time before I started playing, but it's always a... Uh, it's always a tournament that's focused on some kind of water rule, and the gimmick is that it's like a pool party, and there's like a, a cookout, and uh, people bring food, and people kind of hang out, and there's like a VGC tournament, and people play poking and stuff. Um, it's held at RTO's house. It's kind of a nice, casual thing. I think it's one of the things that really makes the uh, Washington Pokemon community special. Um, just having this kind of get-together for everyone at, at the end of the year. Typically, it's before Nationals, or after Nationals, but before Worlds. But this year, there's some weird scheduling stuff. Um, but the tournament itself is actually for charity. It's uh, a player by the name of Kaysen uh, passed away, unfortunately, in an accident. Um, I, I assume years before I started playing again. And um, the tournament has, like, a suggested entry fee, and then all of those... Um, Entry fees go to his charity. It's like a scholarship fund in Oregon, so which is pretty cool. Um, so not only do you get to play Pokemon, have a good time, but it's also for charity. And the tournament's always based around some kind of water gimmick. So I don't remember all the years I've played, but usually it ranges from, you know, 30 card decks, all water Pokemon uh, is usually kind of the main thing. And then there's rules from there. Uh, last year, I actually won the event, um, and it was 30 card decks, um, all water Pokemon, when you play an EX, your opponent gets to immediately take a prize, and, um, and there was a special rule introduced, like, the moments before, like, after your deck list was submitted and everything, and a special rule was actually that you take your turn backwards, and so you attack at the beginning of your turn, and then play your cards, and then draw a card, um, I ended up playing Wailord EX, kind of a no-energy deck, similar to what one national or what got second at nationals last year and so the new rule was actually insane for me because i was able to you know i, I don't care about attacking so i'm not doing that i have no energy and then i start you know my turn and i crushing hammer enhanced hammer team flare grunt or whatever and then you start your turn and have no energy so the rule was actually just huge for the whaler decks so i ended up winning beating uh, kyle pukasukovic in the finals and other years have been like one year was that you got to stack your deck um, that was pretty cool. One year is that you and your opponent mix your deck together. One year it was all Pokemon that are weak to water. Just kind of stuff like that. Just kind of always fun, silly things. Uh, this year is actually interesting. You, it's 30 cards, water Pokemon only, no Wailer DX, and you bring two decks. And then, like, you play, uh, a game with, like, deck A versus your opponent's deck A, and then the loser has to play their deck B, and the first person to win two games wins. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, Liam Williams basically designed the deck I'm playing. Uh, the first one is a sort of a, uh, like, similar to the Wailord deck, but with the team Aquas Kyogre has 190. But besides that, same thing. No energy, uh, just kind of crushing hammers, disruption. And then the second one is kind of a water box Seismitoad deck based on... Uh, the idea that you want to item lock all your opponent's mill decks. So kind of the no energy, whale lord decks, whale lord decks. Oh, also you cannot share cards between the two decks. So if you have any amount of crushing hammers in one deck, you can't have any in the other one. So that's pretty interesting. I think I'll do well. Um, I think that the decks are well designed. It just kind of depends on what people come with. For instance, if our Seismitoad deck... Our Seismitoad deck stops being that good if, pe if other people aren't playing heavy item kind of disruption decks, so we'll see with that, but, uh, so yeah, it should be pretty interesting to see. Uh, I'm headed off there now, gonna go pick up some cards for the deck, gonna go pick up Liam and Maddie, and then we'll be off. <laughs> Hey guys, Kenny here. Just wanted to give a roundup for the water gym. Uh, so that bit that you saw a few minutes ago uh, where you saw Tyler's face splash across the screen was them announcing me at ninth place. So it cuts to a top eight, of course, like every other tournament. I drew in the last round and uh, they announced me as ninth place somehow. And I was pretty tilted. That's why I didn't even realize I was recording. Like I wanted to record the top eight announcement and then we, uh, I got ninth and kind of freaked out, so you can kind of hear, like, Ben talking, and you can kind of hear me say, like, you know, all ninth place, you can hear Kyle say, like, you can play my cube if you want, man, to tilt me, 
Um, but what happened was the that printout actually had the, the seniors on it too, and because the, the seniors were like in our age group, but they were like in their own division. Uh, so I ended up eighth, which was good. And the the topic was actually really interesting. So what we did was like we said, like I said before, we had our thirty card decks, and we took them and we randomized all of them, every one of the tables, and then we made put. So then we each had 60 cards in front of us, and we made six 10-card packs, and we actually drafted. Um, I'll put a picture of my draft deck in the video. But, um, so the interesting thing was we drafted everyone's decks, and so most people had a mill deck, which is interesting because, like, that's not really going to work in six, with 60 card decks, because we had to play every card that we drafted. Um, along with playing every card we drafted, another big issue was that we had to, you had to draft energy. And so, like, if you don't, actually draft your water energy or whatever you're not going to be able to attack and the other thing was that because we're drafting exactly 60 cards we're also playing 60 cards so like i ended up with a 1-1 amistar that i couldn't play because i didn't have the fossil like i phys i had to play it in my deck but i couldn't actually physically put it on the table um i played a match so on top of that we did that really interesting actually really most fun i've ever had at a pokemon tournament probably just you know I love drafting. Most of the people there love drafting. Kyle, Tyler, all of them, you know, are huge drafters. Uh, and those challenges were really interesting. And I played JP in a match, which I assume will be on YouTube. I'll link it if it is, but I didn't see it. Like, I think the stream, like, cut off before the match started. But he had actually just, like, a Blastoise deck, like a totally, um, like, constructed deck, basically. At Tropical Beach, he had Blastoise, Keldeo, like, Water Energy, just kind of that kind of stuff. And... He got really ahead in game one, and then I locked him out with um, with uh, safeguarders. Like I had like Regirock and Suicune, uh, and that was a really long game. And then game two, he just didn't really get anything going on. He just kind of had these awkward hands, and he tried to attack uh, into my safeguarder with an EX once, and just kind of didn't really come together, and I was able to beat him. Uh, in the top four, I played Tyler, and Tyler had a pretty good deck. Um, our decks were pretty similar, just kind of good stuff decks, like just had a little bit of everything. Um, I guess I should say the big thing I focused on in my deck was I took Energy highly. Would have taken a Keldeo EX over any other card, but I didn't see any because they were, you know, say kind of the most efficient attacker. And um, I took Energy Disruption highly, so I ended up with like four Crushing Hammer. Um, and other than that, I just kind of had good stuff. Uh, and he won a really long, he won a, a long but dominant game one. I think I should have probably scooped earlier. And then I was way behind in game two, but managed to come back. I even considered scooping game two and just, like, you know, saving time hanging out. But I was like, oh, whatever, it's the water gym. Like, I'll keep playing. And managed to come back in game two. Time was called early into game three, and he... So it was a sudden death situation. He took it. Um, I think his deck was more set up to take it. Like, I think, you know, if we run that ten times, he probably takes it seven times. But I also drew just really poorly. I only drew energy. I had, like, multiple turns of having to attach and retreat to like not let not let him take the knockout the one knockout um and eventually it came down to a reggie ice um ice blizzard i think whatever the paralyzed attack flip is called and i got tails and he won um so yeah disappointing because i went so deep you know these past two years are the only time i've ever done well at the water gym i won last year and then went deep this year so i would have liked to have won or at least made the finals and been on camera again but tyler is a excellent player and uh his deck, like I said, was probably going to beat mine. It had Octillery. So, like, our decks were pretty similar, except his, his had Octillery. So he just had, like, kind of constant draw. And then he also had Parallel City, which he could use to make all my attacks cost less. Like, literally every one, because they're all water Pokemon. So that was kind of rough. Um, but it was a really good event, really fun. Uh, it's for charity. We raised... Um, I don't know how much the actual tournament entry raised, because they have, like, a suggested entry fee. But for the um charity like uh raffle that i want that i ran we uh earned 208 dollars which is really nice thanks to everyone that donated um after this video you're going to see a, a, the announcement of the winner of that contest actually it'll be in the next clip but so that was really cool um i think the the top eight was some of the most i've ever had um i think the interesting thing if you look at the water gym now especially these past couple years um the top eights in the whole tournament really are just so strong. Like this, this top eight had nine Nats or Worlds trophies. Like this top eight featured Kyle Sukovic, um, Jonathan Perinata, Tyler Nenamora, Liam Williams, James Good. Just like 
you know, this top eight was like com compar very comparable to any American regional. And the event as a whole featured all those players I mentioned, plus Paul Johnston, plus Michael Pramwatt, plus Ben Potter. Just these events are, you know, fun and they're, you know, for fun and they're interesting formats and whatever, but they actually are just extremely tough. So I'm really glad that the Water Gym is kind of branching out to having live coverage. Um, I think that that's going to really help grow the game and show the rest of the people in the game how cool the Washington community is. So that's my water gym report. Um, hopefully next year I'll have like more in depth. Like now that now that they're focusing a lot more on the um, on the like promoting promoting the tournament and streaming and the charity and all that, I'm really gonna try to uh, have like a more in depth series of videos leading up to the water gym. Maybe even te some testing if you guys are interested in that. Just kind of in this lull between uh, worlds and the new season, I thought that would be pretty interesting. So thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned to the next clip to see who won the contest. Hey everybody, Kenny Wisdom here. Uh, just as I was talking about, we are now going to do our Elite Trainer Box Generations giveaway. Uh, how I'm going to do this is the slots here are um, based on how many raffle tickets you bought. So uh, I'm not going to give away names. I don't really know if people want that to be public, but there are initials here and I will be notifying the winner. So I actually need to change this number to 105, bringing back up the notepad you see those are the winners here just so nothing's tricky and let's see who wins four and jm uh, i'm gonna go ahead and just say that's josh marking he was pretty open about his donation so congratulations to squeaky i'll contact you soon and get you that elite trainer box and thanks for everyone else that donated uh we'll be doing some more stuff like this in the future i think i uh, just gotta have a few more in the works, but I got to plan it out and kind of vet the charities and all that. So thanks again for participating, guys, and I'll let you guys know when the next one is.